to move on to the next step, uh, which is uh, spend grains. Uh, yeah, spend grains. Um, perhaps, Seb, you want to talk about uh, what we do with the spend grains? Yeah, sure. I mean, um, I think it's also always good to share and to inspire more people about uh, about it. No, no, indeed. Um, so, um, so with the spend grains, we uh, we try to to reuse it. So we uh, we invested in a small um, 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 uh, dehydrator in in the brewery um to to actually dry these uh, spent grains and with uh, the help of uh, alban who's maybe listening in uh we are also uh, you know uh, transforming this spent grain into a flower um and this uh, this is uh, then uh, sent to some uh, local bakers to make uh, to make good bread so we can make uh, uh bread out of beer which is made of uh, bread uh, because as you might know uh, we make also the the papillon uh, out of uh, out of bread as a substitute to um, uh, to some of the barley malt, um, so it's it's you know it was good to to close the loop. Although you need to go very very fast because uh, the spent grains is uh, insanely humid, eighty percent humidity, and it can uh, develop bacteria uh, uh, at the speed of light. Uh, so that's why it was important for us to to have the dehydrator inside the the, the brewery so we can uh, we can go. Uh, uh, fast and overnight uh, get uh, uh, dry spent grains to then um, to then uh, mill it uh, to make the flour to make uh, to make the bread. But then you can make uh, lots of uh, different kinds. Uh, you can make uh, you can make a lot of biscuits as well. Would you say, David? Uh, you can make uh, you can use it as, uh, as your dough for pizza, for example. Yeah, I think uh, let's see about the quantity that you will have uh, here on the Spain grain and how you will uh, dry it. Uh, but indeed, uh, then you can uh, really make uh, lots of different recipes and uh, and get creative and uh, get at, at, at little uh, waste as uh, as possible. Uh, the most common uh, for the breweries is to give to uh, to uh, to farmers, but uh, there is a way to to be a little bit more creative than this. Yeah, correct. Uh, yeah. Go, go on, Don. No, I was just say, saying when I started uh, home, brewery, uh, home brewing, I used to have chicken and they love, they love it. <laughs> just if you don't know what to do and you have chicken, give it to them. <laughs> yeah, I so, mean, so, you, can do, you can do whatever. Yeah, you can do whatever. Cool. You can also um, put it into, I mean, it's a great additive for if you have a, a vegetable garden, it's, it's, it will... It will uh, uh, give some nutrients to the to the uh, the soil, so it's also very good for that kind of stuff. Yeah, that's right. We tried this on the rooftop, and it went crazy. Yeah, we had that uh, little uh, vegetable garden under uh, the brewery uh, rooftop, and 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 so it's 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 all on a, on a rooftop, so they're all in in pots. Uh, we had with some of the pots we gave a spin grain in, and some some others we we didn't. Uh, so it was very much in into some kind of a small experience. And, and our uh, intern back back then, uh, Theo, made a really good job there. And uh, some of those, uh, what was it? Uh, the, the plant was, I mean, so some of those plants were growing like crazy, those that had the, the, the spent grain. So it's a great additive. Yeah. Nice. All right. Cool. I think we're ready to move on to boil. Yes, cool. Uh, and uh, that's a little bit of a reminder. So the boil is the end of your hot block. So you can be bit messy up to that point. <laughs> uh, but after that, there's no more room for uh, mistakes in terms of cleanliness. Uh, so the boil, the boil is basically, okay, you heat up, you heat your wort up uh, to 100 degrees and then and, and you keep it uh, boiling for, uh, I think the recipe here is 75 minutes. 75, yeah. And anywhere between 45 and an hour and a half is okay. Uh, but the longer you boil, the more evaporation you have. Um, so uh, you will lose a little bit of volume there, but it's it's absolutely fine. Um, uh, you actually want that beer to evaporate a bit because that's where you evaporate some of the the the, the off flavors, some of some of the flavors you don't really want into your your beer. So it's good to give it a good boil. Um, it's also good because you can uh, sterilize your uh, everything. So so far, you can. I mean, that's that's also why it's. We say it's the end of the the the, the, the cold block, uh, the hot block. Sorry, um, and uh, it's also the sterilization uh, step. 
um, so that only uh, the microorganisms that we select will be able to ferment uh, the beer afterwards. So we kind of kill everything else. And it's, uh, it's also where uh, a new ingredient comes in and it's uh, hops. Uh, David, yes. you want to talk about this maybe? Uh, yes, hops, uh, we like it a lot. Uh, so hops are, are very important. Um, you know, uh, hops, uh, they, they will deliver bitterness uh, to beer, mainly in this stage, if we add it in the, in the beginning of the well. Uh, bitterness is super important to uh, balance out the sugar that you created with your, with your mash. Um, and that's it for the Delta. We use a challenger, but if you want, you can use uh, uh, whatever the hop you want, um, because there's no big impact on flavor and aromas in this uh, point. Uh, so if you don't have Challenger, it will be fine if you have something um, like Magnum or, uh, I don't know, Chinook or Centennial. Uh, normally, people aim to use uh, hops uh, that are very high on alpha acids, so they need to use less. So the alpha acids is, um, is the, the level of bitterness that you are introducing um, uh, in the beer with your hops. Um, uh, in this case, a good, good picture, uh, Xavi. Uh, normally, there's two ways of... Uh, of um, I mean, they all come from the from the same flower, of course, but you can use it as a as a as a cone, or you can use it as a pellet. Uh, to our, in our in our case, we we do prefer to use pellets because they are uh, easier to to storage, and you have a better optimization of the of uh, of of them. Um, but that's it. So we add it in this case the challenger. We're gonna boil it for uh, seven to five minutes, um, and that's it. Uh, I don't know if you want to add anything, Antoine. Yeah, I think I think I think this is a uh, uh, so so the alpha acid of your hop. It always comes with your packaging, so it's always written unless you have you don't have a good hop supplier. Uh, but if you had a good hop supplier, it always comes with the the alpha acid content on the packaging, and that's uh, that's uh, indeed the, the bitterness uh, potential of your hop. And it's different for every hop and for every harvest and for every year, so it's always different. So that's where you need a little bit of calculation. And uh, just remember the hop you put at the beginning of your boil will bring the bitterness. And so it, it takes time for the hop to develop the, the bitterness and it only happens during the boil. So remember that the cold step, they don't, they don't produce bitterness, only the hot steps are. So the boil is where you develop all of, all of the bitterness. So one common mistake is to always put the same amount of hops, but those hops have different alpha acid content. So you end up with completely different uh, bitterness down the line. So uh, there's a lot of nice calculators and tools uh, out there in on the internet. So just, just make sure you make the right, right calculation. So if we say you use that many grams of that hops, if you want to sub substitute it, just make sure that the, the calculation work. Uh, but uh, I agree in this stage, like the type of hops you, you use, it does have an impact, but not as much. So uh, yeah. you will still bring the bitterness. Yeah, and so just taking the picture that um, uh, Xavi is, uh, is, is put, put in the screen, um, if you are using uh, the whole cones, it's important that you use those uh, small bags, otherwise it will be a mess uh, afterwards. Um, so just grab a, uh, some muslin bag or some tea bag or something that can hold your hops so you can have a cleaner transfer in the end of, of the boil. Um, uh, but that's it. That's it. I think you have a nice tip here as well, no? From your uh, mother cup. Ah, yeah, you can go to the, to the <laughs> you can go, go, go just sneak uh, into the drawer of your uh, mom or grandma and uh, just take some uh, old socks uh, that she, she doesn't use. Some anymore. of the ni ni nylon. Uh, yeah, yeah, it needs to be the nylon ones, you know? <laughs> the ones that you use to rub a bank, you know? <laughs> That's where to get uh, the best aromas. Yeah, yeah, but they can be cheesy, although. <laughs> <laughs> yep so it, all yeah. right so we just have, leave yeah you right. have questions uh i have one question actually two questions of uh around the hops but i think the the second one is more for dry hopping because it's speaking of uh, smaragds yeah uh perhaps we can approach already the whirlpool uh, because there's no much more additions uh, so we can go to till the end of the boil and then we we collect all of the answers all of the yes, questions. there's just one question that's for here for hops, which is, uh, pour les houblons, parle-t-on parle dans la recette de pellet ou de cône, et comment faire la conversion au niveau grammage de l'un à l'autre? So how do you convert yeah. the grams yeah. from uh, pellets to cones? 
Okay, so um, I think we're talking about uh, pellets in the recipe. Uh, yes. And you get more extraction from the pellets. So the pellets, they come like they, they are condensated, and as soon as you hydrate them, they will uh, uh, dissolve and make some, some kind of dust or powder or whatever. So it really increases the, the surface ratio for. Um, for uh, for diffusion and, and extraction of everything, so uh, you get a lot higher extraction out of those. Um, so if you use uh, cones, you definitely need to use more of it. Um, how much more of it? I think uh, I wouldn't be able to answer that question uh, on the top of my mind right now. Uh, but three definitely to one, I don't remember as well, but it's like three to one, no, four to one. Yeah, but I have, I have a thirty percent ratio kind of. I don't remember properly, end. but uh, you yeah. might find some some um, some uh, charts online that help you on that. I don't remember by heart, but there's a there's a simple rule for that. Yeah, uh, and also if you're using pellets, I wouldn't be worried too much about the, those particles I was talking about because they will drop in the bottom of your kettle. Uh, I mean, eventually. So uh, I think it's, it's it is just fine. Perfect. Well, let's move on to the whirlpool then. I go ahead, David. Uh, so we finished the, 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 our boil, so the 75 minutes. Uh, in our case, for Delta, we don't have more additions. But if you want, for example, to make it a bit more clear, you can use Irish moss in the end of the boil if you need. Uh, you can use nutrients if you need in the end of the boil. Uh, uh, those will be always uh, up to you if you want to use them or not. Uh, but the end of the boil, we have a, a beautiful step, um, which is the, the whirlpool. Uh, basically, is you just create a vortex in the end of the of the of the boil to make sure that all of the um, all of the particles in suspension they will uh, stick in the in the bottom, like this picture that um, that uh, Chavi is uh, showing. Uh, for example, this is a very good example of the dy dynamics that will happen with the pellets. So if you use pellet hops, uh, that will that's what will happen. So most of the particles will stick in the bottom. If you use uh, cones, uh, they will uh, fly around in the, in the liquid. Um, so for, for uh, the whirlpool step, the addition that we do is um, uh, two ops, two different ops, two different ones uh, in name and in flavor. Uh, so it's the first time we are using Citra. Uh, Delta is the Citra for IPA, so we use uh, loads of uh, Citra hops on it. But we also use the smaragds, uh, which is not a very uh, common hop, but we like it a lot because it gives you nice uh, floral notes, peppery notes, a bit of spice, a bit of earth, earthy flavors. Um, it's, it's quite interesting, but uh, of course, it's mainly f uh, focused on, um, on citra, which will give you citrusness, uh, will give you um, uh, tropical aromas, uh, some lime, a bit of grapefruit. Um, yes, yeah, so, so yeah, I think some of the hops you use it in the beginning of the boil to develop the bitterness, and some other of the hops you use it at the very end of the boil just to to get the aromas. If you use those aromatic hops in the beginning, you would just lose all of the aromas. It, it's a bit pointless to use them as bittering hops. So just remember, the longer it boils, the the longer the the, the aroma have time to evaporate. So it's it's best to keep those super aromatic hops for. The, the very late uh, stages of the boil. So you actually keep those aroma uh, into your wort. And also what you see on that picture uh, right there, it's, it's kind of a muddy, like a brownish and, and, and greenish thing. It's a mix of, of hop uh, residue and also some uh, proteins. So it's very normal that you will see during the boil some kind of little um, flakes or whatever forming it's all of the proteins from the grain that are coagulating together and by making that whirlpool by swirling in in circle and creating that vortex in the center you actually make make them all come together and that allows you to not bring them to the next step it's a, it's a way of uh, keep keeping them in that kettle and not bringing them in the, into the next step um, um, don't know if there's a... Yeah, I just, I mean, at this point, we are not uh, uh, flaming anymore, so that we are not applying any heat. So the temperature of your, um, of your wort will start to, to drop. So because you are not at boiling temperature, you have less isomerization in, your, in the hops that you added. So you have less extraction of bitterness um, and more and more uh, extraction of uh, um, aromas. So that's the first yeah. step that aromas... Uh, 
this this is this is very true although if you keep it for if you keep that step for too long if you wait for too long in that step you still give the the, the hops a chance to create the bitterness um yeah. so at that point i would just very much focus on getting to the next uh, step uh, quite quick so you do your 75 minutes of boil then you flame out you stop uh heating up then you do your whirlpool and uh, we didn't say it yet, but uh, after you swirl it and you create that vortex, you let it, you leave it for 10 minutes. So you don't have, uh, just leave it, let, let everything drop in the bottom for 10 minutes. And once it's very quiet and still, then you can sort of, uh, next step is this, which is transferring uh, to, well, uh, well, it is transferring it, it's also cooling it down and transferring to the fermentation tank. Yeah, maybe also to uh, go back to the previous question, I was checking about the uh, yield difference between uh, hop flowers and uh, hop pellets. They're talking about 10% uh, of um, uh, extraction power, which is uh, higher on the, on the pellets. So you need indeed the, uh, less pellets and flowers, but you know, to a ratio of 10%. For the aromatic, uh, well, you know, on the, um, uh, the researcher would say one-to-one -one ratio is good for the uh, aromas and flavors, uh, but then it depends also on uh, how fresh your uh, your hop flowers are. Uh, very much easier to to get oxidized. Um, so as long as you have you know fresh hop flowers, uh, you can apply one-to-one -one ratio for the aromatic. Um, but if they are a little bit old and it's not easy to get fresh hop flowers as a home brewer. Um, then you need indeed to 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 add more uh, uh, more uh, more more flowers for the same uh, impact. Yeah, that's very true indeed. And we didn't talk about hop pack packaging at this stage. And I think it is very crucial, especially if you want to brew a good delta, uh, because yeah, especially delta, now, uh, from yeah. now on, now on is very important that we talk about packaging and freshness. Uh, yeah, not so important in the bittering edition. Uh, still important, but uh, from now on is uh, way way more important that we approach freshness. Yeah, and I think all of these hop aromas are very, very fragile and, and that it's very key that you get the best hop supply as you can and also that you store it the right way. So you'll, you'll get your hops, if you have, again, if you have a good hop supplier, you'll get them in those... Uh, uh, sealed. Like, yeah, sealed packaging that are uh, airtight and uh, light tight also. So uh, hop Hop will will uh, yeah, um, sorry uh, how can I say it, the the oxygen and 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 UV light uh, will de will deteriorate your hops very 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 quickly so keep it away from oxygen light and also uh, the hotter it gets the faster it goes so uh, the best way is to keep those packaging closed put them in your fridge until you're using them and once you've used them. Uh, if you're not done, if you still have leftovers, I would suggest you use them as fast as possible. And again, you just reclose that packaging and put it back to the fridge. Otherwise, if you wait, if you have a one year old hops that has been open and that has not been storage storage properly, don't even think of using it. Uh, it's going to be pointless. So uh, make, make sure you have the best quality ingredients. That's in, also very important. Especially on the citra, uh, which is, you know, of course, the main identity of the uh, of the delta, especially on the hop side. So, uh, yeah, fresh, fresh uh, citra as much as we can. Right. Javi, eat us with the questions. Oh, yeah, there's a few. <laughs> so the first one from Tristan, who is asking, what is your whirlpool duration? And if we lower the temperature before adding aroma ups? Uh, yes, uh, so we suggest something like 10 minutes uh, for, for um, home brewing size should be enough. Um, uh, correct, if you drop the temperature, I would say you still need to have it at pasteurization temperature. Uh, but if you drop the temperature, you have uh, less isomerization, so you have less extraction of uh, bitters. So, so, so basically say, it, means, it means that you can use more hops potentially. Yes, so you can have a better extraction. Uh, with less on less extraction better extraction of uh, aromas and flavors without having so much impact in bitterness so i would say you can you can drop it to 85 degrees 90 degrees something like that okay i don't know if you have something to add Antoine. 
No, definitely a good idea. And this is exactly where we say, uh, if you understand the process, you can surprise us with some tweaks of the recipe and make it yeah. as good as you think you, it can it's be. Actually, it's actually a, a technique that is very um, um, common in uh, New England IPAs. Yeah, and it's something that we've uh, practiced quite a bit also, yeah. uh, not in 2012, uh, back in the days, uh, but we've learned to to master, right? not masterize, uh, no, I don't want to be pretentious, but we've learned how to work with those techniques. Um, yeah, but it's definitely a good idea if you if you want to drop the temperature a bit, uh, it's great. Uh, just uh, the, the, the only thing is if it takes an hour to drop for <laughs> 10 degrees, I wouldn't do it. Like just, just remember exactly. you need to be quite quick at that point. At that point. Yeah, but but Delta, but Delta, a strong characteristic of Delta is a nice, nice sharp bitterness, you know. Uh, so yeah. I guess you want the bitterness to be there, you know. We we don't we are not we are not shy about uh, having bitterness in the in the Delta. It's not the New England. We don't want it juicy. We want bitter, uh, crisp, you know. So it's fine if you put the ops in the whirlpool uh, as we suggest, like straight away, because that bitterness will be uh, good for the style. Will be good to, to, for the beer. Yeah. I know, I think altogether it's a good idea. Great. Uh, next question from Breaking Bob. Again, how does Whirlpool impact IBUs? It, it can be quite significant, actually. Uh, we've, uh, especially, we've, we've, we've tried uh, uh, to have massive Whirlpool additions for uh, beers like New England IPAs and stuff like this. And, and if you leave it for too long, or if your cooling time is too long, then it really have a massive impact on your bitterness. You can really go plus 30 IBUs if you if it stays for too long. So if you're targeting, I don't know, something like 45, let's say for a delta, it can it can really go up to 60, 65 if you leave it for too long. So just be just be careful. Uh, it, it really depends. If you stay within reasonable amounts, uh, it shouldn't impact too much, but it goes up really quickly. And also, usually those aromatic hops that we are using in the whirlpool, they also have high alpha content, so it's even more risky. So, yeah, All stick right. with the timing at this point. All right. Next question from Chucho Escobar. <laughs> um, what about adding pellets at different temperatures while we are whirlpooling? Uh, but that's fine as well. Uh, it really depends on what you want. Uh, we apply that technique very often for IPAs, um, not for the Delta, but for normally we, we do an addition in the beginning of the Whirlpool and in the end of the Whirlpool. So meaning that the addition in the end of the Whirlpool, you will focus even more in aromas, uh, even more in flavor than in, uh, in bitterness that you are extracting from the first uh, addition. So nothing against, uh, it's, a, it's a good technique as well. Uh, All right, great. And last question from Samuel Lange. Okay, Samuel, who just commented on the live that is from Brussels. So Samuel, uh, there's no more excuses to send us your Delta. Uh, so the question <laughs> is for the 20 liter target, how much time of whirlpooling shall he aim at? Um, and he had troubles with that step in the past. I think 10, 10 15 minutes, I mean, don't, do not be shy on the whirlpool. I mean, be careful because it can go jump out of the, your kettle, but just just make it as hard as you can. Uh, just don't be shy on the whirlpool. And then when it stands still, you can start transferring, I guess. Yep. But again, it really depends on the diameter of your kettle and everything. So there's a little also, bit of also, feeling. Also depends on the, the way you extract the beer from the, the kettle, you know, how fast uh, you do it and uh, which method do you use? I think we're going to approach it later. Yeah, ideally, a wider kettle is best for this uh, step because then you'll have your, uh, what's called the trub, what you see on the picture, the, the mix of proteins and hop residue that will be in the center. And if your kettle is actually wider, then you have more um, yeah, space to, to, to get the beer out of the, of the kettle. All right, great. I think we're ready to move on to work. Yeah, there, was, there was a question yeah. before. Uh, Chavi, about the smaragds, about uh, not yes. people not being able to um, to provide buy it. it. Yeah. Uh, yes, I was waiting for the dry hopping stage to ask this one, but uh, ah, but you don't use smaragd in the dry up. So... Then that's my bad. So <laughs> question, question from uh, Mark, who is saying that uh, smaragd hops are not more are not longer <laughs> available at uh, Brolan, Bromag, Le Contre de Brasser, or Beers. 
what can you replace it with? He was thinking of uh, using a Marillo, and does it make sense to you? Okay, so uh, agree is not easy. It's not a sexy hop, uh, but we like it a lot. So uh, it's a it's a hop that uh, gives you nice uh, floral um, and a bit of fruity aromas. So I'll not go so much for um, Amarillo. I'll go more for something uh, German, something like Alachtal um, Mitte that will give you still a bit of fruitiness and a lot of uh, floral um, uh, notes. Uh, for example, uh, Amarillo, I will use it more if you don't have, um, for example, Cascade, you know, because we, we use a bit in the dry up. For example, if you want to replace the Cascade with something, I would do it for, with Amarillo. But for the Smaragd, I would go more into a German direction, like uh, uh, for sure. Bless you. I think in general, if you don't, if you cannot provide provide one of those hops, just just look at their uh, profile aroma profile description, and try to match it with something that has a similar uh, profile. Uh, especially those steps, uh, whirlpool and dry hopping, because you want what you want is aroma. So just look for aroma. Um, yeah, I would say that. I mean, there there's a. There's a couple options there, um, but just try to match it as best as you can. All right. Cool. Word cooling? Word cooling.